So from 17 once again, this is my Last of Us Grounded Difficulty video walkthrough. This is chapter 8, Lakeside Resort. There are three parts in my walkthrough right now. There is the very first hunt section that you're watching here, where you shoot the deer twice and then you follow his bloodstain. There will also be the altercation with the dirty bastard in that shed. Then in the second video, it's going to be the final altercation in that building with a ton of infected. And then the video after that is going to be everything else that follows, the, the icy sections and so on and so forth. The alley parts are by far the most difficult, in my opinion. Namely, the, the two firefights you have with gotcha. Nolan North's character, who I can never remember the name of. He's just the cannibal crazy macheted guy the reason why it's difficult is pretty simple you're, you're forced into a situation unlike anything else in the last of us you put in a very small area and you're made to fight off waves of infected and where it gets tricky is you're almost guaranteed on the harder difficulties to not have enough ammo to take them all on comfortably a lot of the times it all depends on the look of the drop, the look on the AI giving you ammo, things of that nature. I've had moments where I've been given six bullets by David, is the guy's name. Other times he's not given me anything, not even a fart. So you just have to be aware that there's a lot of luck here. And that's why you should never get angry with it. You should never get frustrated or annoyed because it's not in your hands. It's out of your hands. All you need to do is make sure every shot you have counts. If you, unlike that one. <laughs> if you can do that, you'll be fine. Even if you can't do that, sometimes you'll be fine. But just be aware, it gets hectic. So the cool thing about this section is the pattern is the same every time. So the more you fail, feasibly, the more you'll remember where they come from. I would love to tell you where they come from, I can't remember, because I failed a few times, but I'm terrible at remembering things like that, you know. We should think I'd be better at it, because I'm a, a schmuck player, I really like those games, yet yeah. I'm terrible at pattern memorization, unless it's, you know, muscle memory of, you know, here's a swing, here's how to dodge it, that stuff I remember fine, but when it comes to anything that's a little bit more complicated than that, like multiple spawns and different waves of things. Unless I really study it, I just I just don't remember it, I just react. And I've always preferred to play that way, which is why I never was very good at shooting games, because just reacting on those games is not good enough. You know, at some point you need to know where not to be on the screen or you get completely bummed by bullets. But this is a great example of it. For the most, you can react on this kind of fight, but you're at the mercy of drops. So on one side, you can risk letting people in the room so that you can loot their bodies, potentially. Or you can kind of keep them outside, stay safer, but run the risk of running out of bullets. And then David's going to be the best way of keeping you alive. Either he gives you bullets, or he shoots things for you. The thing I really like about this particular encounter is how satisfying this rifle feels. And I don't know if it's just because I've not used the rifle for a while, or if it's just the way that Ellie fires it, but there's something innately satisfying about just destroying people with the rifle in this, this particular section. Also, another look variable here is the arrows. If you get really lucky, your arrows won't break. If you get really unlucky, they will. There is no way to dictate it, there is no way to control it. It's... So one of the things I'd change about The Last of Us if I could. Because if there was a skillful way of getting your arrows not to break, I would really, really love to, to discover it and share it. Because it would make the bow the most useful weapon on the game. Ooh, I made a mistake here as well. I did not think that the clicker could get in, so I didn't shoot it. And it got in, and it got far too close for comfort. The good news is, aside from wasting that bullet, I would have been able to kill it with melee only, which could have been super useful. However, I didn't because I choked. So, learn from my mistakes right there, guys. Shoot that thing before it gets in the room. And then we're on to the little stealth section here with the clickers, which, if I remember correctly, doesn't go very well. Yeah, it doesn't. 
So now that everybody knows where we are, because they've all got that hive mind going on. Ooh, and also, clickers can drop into this tunnel. I didn't know if they could, because they can't climb ladders, but they can also they can drop down here, so that's something worth noting. However, the old ladder kryptonite definitely saves us here, so we can climb up this and we can get the hell out of there. It's going to be a crossfade here to the top of this. I kill this clicker. You don't have to. I've kept this in just to show you me beating him up. Ellie is so powerful with that knife, it's unbelievable. And I just don't understand, you know, Joel's been surviving for how long and the dude still doesn't have a knife? What is he playing at? Oh, interesting, I've got the videos wrong. So all of the Ellie section is going to be in this first video, it would seem. This right here is probably the trickiest part. So, notice I have a bomb filled with scissors. You want to put that where I just popped it. When the bloater turns up, that bomb is going to kill it. I'll put it to weather an inch of its life and then you can throw a molotov that'll finish it off. At this point here, you want to spawn kill these three dudes and try and pick up any arrows or ammo off them that you can. Be careful though, two clickers drop in. I've actually been killed on the drop animation by this clicker because he, he just kind of super grabbed me. It was like a Liu Kang bicycle kick grab. And please try to shoot a little bit better than I am. Little funny factoid here. I got a successful run of this on my second attempt, but it crashed. <laughs> and I had to do it all over again, and then I ended up failing about five or six times before I got this run. Something you can do here if you're comfortable and you're, and you're good, because it takes a large amount of skill and a large amount of luck, is there's a shit ton of bottles and bricks in that other room. You can use them to kill enemies without wasting bullets. One of my first few attempts, I did that for quite a long time, and... If I'd have not got trapped by a clicker on one side and some runners on the other side and ended up taking damage, I would have probably been good to go for the rest of that run. And I was surprised just how effective it was. However, it's a lot more difficult to control where they come from when you stand in that other room than it is when you stand here. And you can't just keep running to that other room to pick up bottles and bricks because you're just going to get bottlenecked and run into trouble. So the choice is, you know, you either do it in this corridor or you do it in that room. And I've always found this particular stretch of geometry to be the best place to hold down. And David doesn't do a bad job. The only criticism I have of him here is if you stun somebody with a brick and he shoots them, it will put them out of your stun and put them into an attack stun. Which means if you get close to them, they can still grab you. And you're already in there going for the execution thinking they're stunned, and they aren't. So they will bite you. And that's happened to me. I've also got a video footage of that in my fail video I put up. But you know you're getting close to the end when the bloater turns up, because after him there's only about four runners left, and then the section's done. So the L3 means the bloater's turning up. Pop your Molotov on, wait for him to drop down. As soon as he lands, throw the Molotov at him. Between the bomb and the Molotov, this guy is hes dead. If you don't kill him with that, hopefully you've got a couple bullets left. If not, you might be in a spot of bother because if he starts throwing that bullshit at you, there's not a lot you can do. But there we go. He dies. Ellie says something about it to tell you he's dead. And then the last few enemies turn up. So you'll notice I'm not using my bullet here. I'm waiting for David to kill him, but David's taking his sweet time, so I put a bullet in him, get two bullets for my trouble, take that one down as well. Keep on checking my back, even though I don't think anybody spawns from behind you after the bloater. And that's it. So it doesn't look too bad, does it? But when you're playing it, it's pretty intense, and at any one given moment, it can get really, really hectic. Tricky s section, but no harder than it was on Survivor for me, personally. And because other areas have been tougher on this difficulty, I would probably say that is no longer the hardest part of the game. But thank you very much for watching. Hopefully that helped, and you take care now.